checkered flag in the air. And he's going to house it. It's amazing. Absolutely amazing. What's going on, everybody, and welcome to another Angle of Pursuit podcast. That is Brian Twining. I'm your host, Kyle Robert. We are here to talk about Sonoma. We're going to build some DraftKings lineups, give you thoughts on the player pool, uh, as well as update the betting card, look at where the numbers have moved, because, man, there has been some movement. But Oh, yeah. Uh, Brian, before we break, jump into it and talk about everything, I do want to talk a little Xfinity, because I do think it gave us a little bit of an insight um, into what we may see on Sunday, obviously different cars, different people, but, uh, a lot of, fi- uh, familiar faces out there. Alma Rolla obviously got the win. Kyle Larson, Ross Chastain. Yep. Um, a lot of guys trying to get a little extra practice on, um, on the, on the track, I guess from, from your perspective as someone who watched the whole thing, is there points where passing is going to be viable Are you know, obviously, um, you know, when we talk DraftKings, we're going to have to make some decisions. Like, yeah. are we just going to want to go with the cars in the front and try and get as many Dominator points and fastest laps as we can? Uh, or do we think, you know, some, there's there's going to be some opportunity for some guys starting near the back? Can they move up? Is moving up to 15th enough? Like, well, I guess, what was your read on the race? And what do you think uh, we may see on Sunday? Yeah, I... I think there is definitely spots where people can pass. Um, it, ultimately, though, I think it's really going to come down to what kind of car these guys unloaded with. I mean, you can tell who the players are. I mean, after watching practice and qualifying for the Cup Series, during practice, you could tell the guys who they've got speed this weekend and the guys who clearly don't, and they have a lot to work on. And then when you look at the Xfinity race, the top four finishers are all double dippers. This week, they're all four cup guys that'll be racing tomorrow morning or tomorrow afternoon, actually. So, I mean, clearly these guys, you know, they got some really good track time. I will say it was without question a Kyle Larson day. He, he, as you said it before we jumped on here, he was max for stopping the field. Like this was a F1 race essentially until a late caution came out and, you know, everyone pitted he took zero, he took no tires there were a couple people i think who stayed out that kind of pushed him back and then he was biding his time behind eric almarola and then he made one one like very slight two, he cut the corner slightly too sharp and ran into the tire barrier which ruined his race still came home third but i mean even at cup series practice it is clear that kyle larson uh, he's just in another like level on this track or on road courses or just every week when he unloads good he's really good which is weird to see him qualify so poorly given how good he's looked all weekend and i know qualifying is his own animal and it's hard to you know you don't want to use it as the only thing but when he can be that fast and that dominant for him to just not even get into the final 10 is pretty wild to me yeah i don't i don't know i honestly like I think it, it it is telling to see some of the guys who came with speed that you didn't really expect, like Denny Hamlin, who's on the pole. I mean, yeah. who the hell would have predicted that crap? But um, as far as Larson goes, th- the way they have qualifying set up for road courses, I, it's cool, especially for somebody who doesn't really know a whole lot about that. Like they do the 15 minute period, and there's a there's like a strategy where guys wait to be the last guy to cross the start finish line to run their lap, which ultimately gives them an advantage because they take longer to cool down the tires. And then I, it, it, like, I feel like he just got stuck in like a weird stri- strategic no man's land during his qualifying run in his group. And still like, to me, he's one of the handful of guys that legitimately have a shot to win tomorrow. Yeah. It's uh so F1 does their qualifying in a very similar way where they start eliminating people and then they move people through and then there's different and everybody's kind of on the track together. And it's all about timing your run correctly. Not hopefully yeah. no one crashes in front of you, that kind of stuff. Yep. Um, it didn't seem like there was a huge discrepancy between the first group and the second group in either qualifying or practice, which I think was surprising to see. Um, after last year, where with the the races prior um, yeah. and the different tire kind of screwed up that first group, so that I was th- good. To- yeah, no, I think uh, that that's a good point there. Like this was one of the first races all season where we've had practice and qualifying where the groups weren't drastically different because no. of track conditions changing all that stuff. I will say, uh, 
One of the most telling quotes we got before the Xfinity race was from uh, AJ Allmendinger, who basically came out and said, like, yeah, you know who's got short run speed, but because nobody was able to put together, you know, 20 lap runs, you got a handful of guys that didn't even run five laps, yeah. or c- consecutive five laps during Cup Series yeah, practice. Cindric, Justin Haley, Daniel Suarez, Eric Jones, Harrison Burton, and Josh exactly. Bullicky all didn't put down five. Yeah, and straight. it's like barely half the field ran 10 lap sequences. Yeah. So, I mean, you, we really don't know who's going to have the best fall off for an extended period of time, you know, for those short runs, it, yeah. we have a good idea, but it'll be interesting to see who's able to manage their tires. Yeah. And that's why, again, like you kind of go back and you default to the road course racers who, even though they may not have put together the best qualifying lap are still going to be there or be towards the front at the end because they're able to maneuver the race a lot better than, you know, regular oval racers with not a lot of experience here. Yeah, no, I think that makes sense. Um, and honestly, uh, yeah, yeah, I think uh, I think it'll be I'll be interested to see. Uh, AJ Allmendinger did mention that Kyle Larson was the fastest, and he's going to be hard to catch. But um, and he was until that yeah. stupid caution. Like it, it, I yeah. don't know. No sport offers the kind of chaos that could ruin a betting card quite like motorsport. Yeah, right it'd be like betting a football game, having your team up four touchdowns, and all of a sudden they lose. Well, it, so I, I use that exact uh, metaphor on, on Twitter, but they're up four touchdowns at the end of the third quarter. But when the fourth quarter starts, the score not only resets, but now they're losing by, by 10 points. Instead yeah, and of, Matt Patricia is their quarterback trying to get them back. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He's like, no, this ain't going to work. <laughs> it's like, um, I yeah, mean, it, could, it, it's ridiculous. Yeah, I mean, we saw it last week. Even if you had yep. a good car, your rotors broke. Uh, your wheel falls off. Your your crew chief for, doesn't get the 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 adjustment wrench out fast enough. Like there's just so many little things that have to go perfect exactly um, to cash these bets. So it really is a challenge. But uh, we'll dive into that. But let's first dive into the DraftKings pricing um, and figure out who we want to target. Because like I said, there is a lot of interesting opportunities this week, depending on how. Um, how we want to do this so let me just make sure that i have the right one on yep okay cool um okay so we i'm gonna start i'm gonna go all the way through the 9k range because there is you know like yeah. eight drivers uh so kyle larson starting 16th uh 10 10 6 was fastest in practice uh both five and ten lap obviously like brian said only about 10 cars did more than five laps so like that's hard to completely adjust for but um definitely worth noting tyler reddick was really fast looked really good 10-4 chase elliott 10-3 kyle bush 12th uh 10-1 and then we go into the 9k with william byron starting 26th ross chastain starting 15th suarez starting 9th uh the dinger starting 5th and austin Sindrick rounding out the 9k range at 9100 uh, we talked a little bit about this. The Penske guys looked like garbage, but my God, is there opportunity there <laughs> if we want to take a yeah. shot? Yeah, I mean, I got to say, I feel like give me the the giant dunce cap uh, for thinking I was getting value on Cindric over Dinger on the betting side of things early in the week. Um, I don't know what happened to Penske. Here, they they qualified great during for Coda. They looked fine. Um even Ryan Blaney, like, yeah, what happened to him this week? He he showed lack of speed, and then Cindric, yeah, what a disappointment. Of this group, though, like, I mean, Kyle Larson's going to be up up front. I just I just don't see a road race here, especially after watching practice and even qualifying, just the way that it played out. I don't see this panning out without him battling for a top three or potentially a win here. So I mean, I. I would see myself rostering, you know, him in a ton of lineups if I were to do like max entry 150 lineup contests and all that stuff. Yeah, I think it's it's a real tough decision. Uh, the Penske guys obviously are going to provide a ton of value, but they looked like garbage. Do we want to throw out, you know, qualifying and practice for one group? The other thing we talked about that, you know, Wormy talked about this on the betting preview show. There yeah. is a difference between Sonoma and kind of the other road courses, and there's obviously a learning curve. That's why a lot of guys wanted to get out there and run double duty this weekend. Um, but just it's just it's its own animal. It some guys that were fast last year 
at Sonoma didn't do well at uh, Coda and Coda guys that were fast did poorly at Sonoma. So yeah, figuring out how to attack it, but there is a lot of interesting options. I'm with you on Larson. He makes sense. Uh, Tyler Reddick, Tyler Reddick looked great starting second. He could easily get to the front and dominate a ton of laps. Obviously there's not as many laps with the big long road course. So something to take into consideration. Uh, I am, I am fading Chase Elliott this week. We'll see how that goes for me. Uh, obviously <laughs> qualified 10th Kyle Busch, uh, 10, one starting 12th. I'd rather go there. What about William Byron? Cause we were both off like about dog him. Shit. Yes, just, but he did not he, look good. Is he donezo? Is he going to learn <laughs> something? I mean, I don't know, man. Kind of across the board didn't look very good. I don't know what to make of it. Yeah, like, okay, so honestly, as bad as Penske looked, as bad as Cindric looked, just with their pasts on road courses, I would much rather roster Austin Cindric just knowing that, th- like, this is this is his his course, like, the, these are the tracks that he excels at, regardless of equipment he's, he's running in. Whereas William Byron, you know, he doesn't necessarily have the history here. And they looked lost yeah. during practice and qualifying. They didn't have the car connected. And I know they're driving in the garage with the guy who looked the best, Kyle Larson. But that it's still about the guy in the seat who has to drive the car around the track. And he did not look good. I, I will, you know, we'll build lineups, obviously. I think maybe we'll build a couple. But I do think if you're doing, um, you know, GPPs that fading Hendrick going with Penske and then fading Penske and going with Hendrick could be an interesting way to get um, get after it. Uh, beyond them, Trackhouse was fine. Suarez looked pretty good, but he seemed to kind of fade as, as the qualifying yeah. went along. Uh, obviously Chastain was just kind of whatever and he seemed kind of whatever in the Xfinity race too. So I'm a little concerned yeah, about but it. He's not really driving great equipment in there. That's so. true. That is yeah, very, very true. Um, and then, uh, anybody else in the nine K range or above? Okay. Right so I gotta, I gotta completely flip the script here and I apologize if anybody bet that, but AJ Allmendinger starting fifth at 9,300. I mean, they said it at the beginning of the Xfinity race. Like he is a bulldog on these on road courses and knowing that his only shot of getting into the playoffs at the end of the day is winning one of these road courses or potentially snagging one of the last two super speedway races. He is going to be a player here all day. I mean, he was, I think the second fastest five lap average during practice, which again, I don't want to take too much away from that just because a lot of guys were running test laps and up to speed laps and all that caca. But I mean, he's, he's, he's a road course guy. He definitely proved me wrong as far as like where he's starting. And I think if you wanted to pivot off of some of the other popular guys, like, you know, Larson's going to be extremely popular, you know, Chase Elliott, the most popular driver in the sport and someone who was running a great lap before he kind of got loose. I think it was like turn 11, which a lot of people had issues with uh, before he wound up qualifying 10th. They're going to be in a lot of lineups. And By- Byron, too. Like A lot of people who didn't watch practice are probably like, oh, shit, William Byron starting 26. Look at all this play- place differential potential for him. Like yeah. I would almost pivot to Dinger hoping he just stays at the front and throws together a ton of fastest laps. I'm just curious because he hasn't, he's ran this race once since 2018, obviously a much different car when he was running back in, you know, 2018, 2017, he did have some like, you know, 20 laps led in 2016, 30 laps led in 2014, but like he hasn't had the finishes. He was 19th after starting 16th, uh, in 2022, you look, you know, I, I don't know. Like he's someone that's difficult for me. Cause yeah, cause he looked good in practice and he looked fast and obviously qualified top five. So he, he looked good, ran the Xfinity race tonight. looks solid there. Um, I just, yeah, I don't know. He's somebody that like, you really have to figure out if you want to lean into what we saw, or if you want to assume what we've seen in the past and hope that the teams can fix it. So if you're in on Dinger, I would be out on the guys that look slow. And if you're out of, in on the guys that look slow, I might be out on Dinger. Um, in the AK range, as you mentioned, Denny Hamlin starting on the pole, something that nobody saw. 
Shouts to our boy Marty Party starting yeah, eight. Yeah, baby. Looks good. Uh, very excited to be holding those tickets. We uh you mentioned on the betting preview show, what was it? 33 to 1. Uh 33 both of us have them on our on our outright card for the week. Uh if Marty gets into victory lane, it's gonna be a fucking celebration. <laughs> oh, dude, I'm gonna be uh, popping champagne everywhere. Oh yeah. Uh Christopher Bell starting fourth, eighty six hundred. Ryan Blaney, Flanagan, <laughs> Team Penske looked bad. Starting yeah. 31st. Uh, I have him as the fastest forward, top forward. <laughs> Not feeling good about <laughs> that. Yeah. Um, Logano starting 17th, and then Kevin Harvick. Uh, and then Alex Bowman at 14th was fine. I, you know, I'm not looking for him to win the race, but I think he, you know, it could be a, uh, a top 10 contender, maybe flirts a top five, but uh, at, at a, even 8K could make some sense if you want to go a little Larson Bowman Hendrick double stack. But I guess uh, who's jumping out to you from this range? I, I'm, I'm going to stick with it, man. Martin Truex Jr. He looked great yeah. in practice. He had a decent five lap average. I think it was the fifth best five lap average. And again, I'm going to go back to this. With this being the first time we're running on this particular track without the cautions after the end of the stages, I really think a guy like Truex, who's run here numerous times in the past, he's mm -hmm. been extremely successful, he's going to have a better idea of how to navigate a Cup Series race without yeah. those breaks versus the majority of the field. And I mean, the fact that he unloaded fast, it's... I. If anybody is going to upset the balance of power this weekend, I think Martin Truex Jr. is somebody to do not sleep on. I mean, yeah. like I lucked out or we lucked out getting such a good number. Like that was just playing the number because it was way too inflated just based yeah. on his, but his recent success did not show like, Hey, you should be jumping on this. But he, he, he did exactly why we bet the number and, showed the speed that he's shown in the past year. And I would not, you know, fade him in DFS either because if anybody's going to be up there throwing together fast laps, being able to play the course and, you know, uh, fit, tinker with his setup during the race and uh, save his tires too on the long run, I think Truex is the guy that could do it. Yeah, and I'm like, we talked about Truex on, on you know, the early show we he what used to be a guy that was dominant at road courses, exactly. and obviously when the when they made the switch to the new car, there were some adjustments. He was just having struggles, kind of in general. He became a much more of a mid pack driver than I think anybody yeah. expected. We've seen tremendous strides from him in general this year. I think he'll have a strong performance, and it was a big part of why we jumped on the number at what we did. But yeah, I'm with you. I think he makes sense as somebody to to target and i think christopher bell is the other to another toyota right behind him makes sense as people that could make sense as yep. early, second dominator uh front of the field kind of uh driver and, and put in some fast laps put in some impressive uh finishes and and be right in the conversation for a win yeah um, and i i just like toyota in general has yeah. really, you know, pushed the envelope this year and they have reemerged as an every week competitor, you yep. know, what no matter who it is. And we bet Toyota to win at 3 to 1. And now we have Truex looks fast, Red Dog looks fast, Christopher Denny's Bell on looks fast, <laughs> Denny's on a pole. Like I know they have less cars, but they have a lot of guys up in that top 10. That's where you want your your bullets so i, I think yeah. that makes sense uh let's go down to this the 7k range chris busher looks fast again I, there's something about him in this track he 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 looks good he uh put it in the top 10 uh teammate brad kozlowski did not look as good he was having issues he was sliding around corners and um he spun out in practice a couple times he was trying to figure stuff out starting 25th 7700 ty gibbs um he looked good as well uh, just keeps keeps impressing. Michael McDowell qualified third. Uh, Bubba qualified eighteenth. I you know. That, I, so I was like, I mean, obviously, again, I'm a big Bubba fan, but I almost feel like he was driving the car too hard to throw together a hot lap. So I, I mean, I don't really 
think that's indicative of what we're going to see out of him during the duration of the race. Like, I think obviously he's going to back it down a little bit to save tires, which would make his day go a lot smoother because it seemed like every time he was running in the green to say, you know, bump into the next stage of qualifying, he, yeah. he went too hard into the corner and he spun his tires or he got loose or just something like that. Like clearly road courses are not his forte, but the car underneath him has plenty of speed here. I mean, he, he, Last, I think Coda qualified ninth or something. So he's he's shown speed. It's just a matter of whether or not he can hang on for the day. And I think the 18th starting position might scare some people off because of his past history on road courses. Yeah, like I don't think he'll win or anything, but oh. I do think he can get into the top 10 and, 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 and stay there most of the day. But yeah, I expect him to be in the high teens. Um, you know, like some somewhere between like 12 and or like nine and, you know, 14. Yeah, like nine and 14 or something. Yeah, most of the day. Uh, and then obviously Briscoe rounds out. Anybody else you want to hit? Like, are Gibbs and McDowell anybody that you're actually interested in potential dominators? It's it's interesting because McDowell looked good here last year, looked good here again this year. I don't think many people will go to him um, as maybe a second dominator, but he. He's just so gross. Like, how do you how do you make that click? <laughs> I was going to say, like, you could almost start a uh, a card with like Denny and McDowell. Just take the two guys that are the bigger surprise like names up at the front and just hope that they hang on. McDowell, I think, is a little more safe because he has a history, you know, recent history on road courses. And then Gibbs, like. He looked phenomenal today yep. during the Xfinity race. But again, that was the first time he's raced on this track. And now he's going to the Cup Series where, like, the the talent gap is much narrower in the yep. Cup Series than it is in Xfinity. And guys are going to be beaten and banging on rest on any restarts we have. So, you know, yeah, I, 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 I sure it sure feels like it's going to be a race where by the end we're like on our seven three start and they keep <laughs> spinning and keep having issues. Well, but maybe so it's not so a, it's not as aggressive of a track I know, but it just it I don't know. However, however, I, say, just, I did I I went back and I looked at the like previous four or five races at Sonoma before stage breaks and yeah. they had as many if not more cautions during the races without stage breaks than we had, I believe, in four of the five Sonoma races with stage breaks. So, I mean, there's I think that has a lot to do with the fact that people are going to be on different tire strategies. Yeah. Tires get, get bald here. I mean, it's a high tire wear track with this new short track package. And so, you know, some guys are going to be slipping and sliding around. And that with how aggressive some of these guys can be, that offers a good potential for cautions. Yep. Uh, 6K, Eric Jones starting 28th, Justin Haley 23rd, Eric Almarola nope. starting 20th. Not buying it. I think he's going to be a popular click like because he looked because he won today. Yeah, I feel like a lot of people are going to put him in their lineups because he won the Xfinity race. Mm -hmm. Right? Pretty so I, he's a total fade for me. Yeah, that's probably the smart move. Ryan Priest starting 22nd, Andy Lally, Austin Dillon. Ryan round out the 6k range if not Almarola is there anybody else in this range that you have any interest in oh give me give me the other college guy uh just Justin Haley I think I like that having dinger in your corner yeah is always going to help you out and I mean he threw together the 10th best practice of any car so I mean clearly there's something there with these guys on this road course so I like him starting further down the field, 23rd, you know, a couple strategy plays. Maybe we get him inside the top 15, you know, he throws together a couple of fastest laps possibly. Yeah. I, I think he's the best bet to make any moves here. No, I think that makes sense. I think that makes sense a lot. Um, sorry. I'm just clicking around and trying to look at a few different things. Um, all right. Let's round out the rest of the field. We have, Recky spin outs himself, Zane Smith, Harrison Burton, Grant Enfinger, who is taking over for Noah Gregson, who's out with a concussion, Corey LaJoy, Todd Gilliland, Ty Dillon, and Josh Balicki. Um, gross, I know, but like, 
Any chance uh, Cor Corey LaJoy feels better back in his old ride? The vision's not on him, and he just kind of does his thing and gets around the track. Yeah, but starting 19th, though, like... I want I want Corey LaJoy when he's starting mid twenties. Yeah. N not not nineteenth. I I like out of this group, I feel like I'd probably just rather take Burton at fifty five hundred starting at the very back of the pack. Yeah. Because it in terms of equipment, he's no different than Zane Smith, uh Enfinger, Gilliland, freaking Ty Dillon. Like, come on. Yeah. All right, let's build the lineup. I do. Do we Kyle Larson? Do we have to? Is it required? I I, I think so. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what do you think about going to Alex Bowman next? I I I like it. I think he's definitely a top ten top ten guy. Okay. So now now is interesting because like the, obviously the Penske guys could make some sense. Um. We could look at Justin Haley, as you mentioned, a, a colleague. We have to find at least one, potentially two dominators. Yeah, yeah. Let's let's throw Haley in there and then see see what we can work with. All right. Feels a little bit better. Is there any other cheap ish like Eric Jones? No, can't do it. I can't do it with him, man. I mean, it's like you're you're scrounging for scraps this far down the board. I it, like I think Busher is a good salary I saver, but you're you're just hoping that he doesn't fall too far out of the top ten. Yeah, but I feel like he could be a top five car most of the day, and at seventy nine hundred as a second dominator could be interesting. The other option is Michael McDowell at seventy four hundred. I know it's gross, but. Sometimes being a little gross is the way to go. How do you feel about that? I don't hate it because, again, I think of those guys, he's he's probably going to be one of the best at just staying the course. Yep. And then it gives us a little more flexibility. So do we Blaney or do we not? Because Blaney Logano <laughs> as a way to finish this out is, is interesting. I don't, okay, so I don't trust Logano at all. And then Blaney not having any speed during practice is scary. Uh, we do we do want to get a dominator. Bell or Truex? Truex? Well, you know I love Truex this week. Let's try that and see what we get. So we still have 8,500. Then we can put Blaney in. We could put Kevin Harvick starting 21st. I don't think he'll win the race, but I think he'll have a strong performance. Maybe, maybe like a top 10 day. Um... Yeah, I would say Blaney, Logano, or Harvick would be one of my picks. If you want to get rid of Logano, that's fine. I mean, is there any, if you do have a name besides those three that you were like interested there's in? There's nobody I'm pounding the table for. Like, I, I really feel like, again, there's a handful of dudes that got a shot to win. Let's say, let's say Ryan Blaney. Let's, he's, I, he's been fast coming into this week. We had optimism coming in uh, into the race. Obviously, he looked like garbage. Yeah. But maybe Penske figures some stuff out. He's starting thirty first. If he gets top twelve car, he has a pretty nice day, and we end up pretty dang happy with uh, his performance. So I think Good that's point. the move. I like that. All right, let's save that lineup. <laughs> Let's go look at the odds because my word, they have moved. Um, so Caesars and DraftKings and Bet River seem to be the most up to date. So we'll just go off of that, and then uh, I barstool and uh, um, Caesars open for some other stuff and for props and whatnot. So Kyle Larson is your favorite, four to one, three and a half to one at Caesars. Tyler Reddick right behind him, four to one. Chase Elliott right behind him, four, five, six to one. These were our favorites when we talked on Wednesday. They're still the favorites. The interesting thing comes in with the next group. AJ Allmendinger down to 10 to 1. Martin Truex, who was as long as 33 to 1, is now 10 to 1. Denny Hamlin start obviously starting on the pole 10, 11, 14. Michael McDowell, who right. uh, was in the 30s, is now 10, 12 or 14. I kind of like some Christopher Bell. You can still get as long as 16. I'm going to cut it off there. So 
of the guys, mostly the Dinger, Truex, Hamlin, McDowell, how do we want to approach these? Because obviously what we see in practice and qualifying is important. Yes. But there was a reason they were priced the way they were. <laughs> For them to move this much at this point, it does feel aggressive. Obviously, we expect the cars in the front to stay near the front. So there is some fit mental math to do there. But I guess is at, if we're going, obviously, we have no bets. We're going to the window. Is any are any of these guys even considerations for you? Yeah, without without question, I would okay. almost be willing to skip the entire three to five range of the top three favorites and just go and just pepper this spot. Like Almendinger, you know his history on road courses. His only two Cup Series or two of his Cup Series wins come on road courses. Martin Truex Jr. We all know his past on road courses. Yeah. Denny, yeah, he may not be the best, but Sonoma has actually been pretty kind to him throughout his career. And then again, Michael McDowell, I don't know necessarily on the outright, especially now when you could have got him at 30. Like I have a hard time betting Michael McDowell at 14 to one. Um, but like I I can definitely see a world where all four of these guys, and then even adding Bell in there, like we've seen him with plenty of speed before, as long as he keeps the car on track, which I don't trust him to do anymore. Um, <laughs> like they can be He's just the as Ryan good. Blaney's mantle for, for just being the one guy in stage three, <laughs> right? shit to go wrong. And, and like, again, if you watch the Xfinity race with Kyle Larson, like, what other kind of bad luck is this guy going to suffer this season? Yeah. I mean, how many times already where he's been in the lead or battling for the lead, was he wrecked out or they have something happened to the car or a couple of years ago, I believe it was Pocono. He's coming out of turn three to win the race and he blows a tire. Like yeah. dude has some bad luck in races. So why, why go to the top when you can just pepper this spot and get good value on all guys that performed well practice and qualify. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't think Kyle Lar Kyle Larson obviously looked amazing, but at three to one, it's really hard to assume that he's just that much better than everybody else. Especially uh, made, starting 16th. Like he's yeah. at a great disadvantage early on in the race. So if you are betting this range, who is your number one, number two, and number three options? Well, I'm I'm this the JGR guys. Like I'm still Martin Truex Jr. was my guy at the beginning of the week. So Truex number one. I got to go Dinger number two, Denny number three, and then and then McDowell. Yeah. Oh yeah, that and then not including Bell. So if I if I add Bell in there, I believe I probably put Bell fourth over McDowell. Just like I I don't know, it's just hard. I don't know. I guess that's it's silly, but you know what I mean. Like on a consistent basis. Yeah, like, I, I, I would put bet, Bell. Bell or I would put Bell third, especially if you can get a sixteen. Um, but in just a, even in just a vacuum, like Denny is just, like he's been pretty decent at Sonoma and obviously put on the pole, good spot to be. But I do have my questions. It, it, I think Truex and Dinger are a clear tier above everyone else. Um, and I'm with you, I would go Truex one and Dinger two. But I think, yeah, both of them, both of them make sense, even though we know there's much better numbers uh, earlier in the week. And that's why you try and tune in because Brian and I are trying to get ahead of the market. And sometimes like this week, it works sometimes out really we well. Uh, and sometimes we get way behind the market with some of the other names that we can talk <laughs> about. Yeah. As we go into the next range, I think it gets interesting. Obviously, Daniel Suarez, he didn't look bad, um, was pretty strong. And yet he's 22 to one now. Um, I think that's interesting. I feel a lot better betting Daniel Suarez at tw north of 20 than I do at 16 or 18, which what he was uh, when we talked earlier in the week. Chris Busher, as long as 20, he's kind of 15 to 18, which I think is interesting. Kyle Busch, there's a value there. Uh, 18, 22, I bet him um, on our, our friendly offshore at like 10 to 9 to 1. So yeah. Don't love that at this point, but at 22, he gets a little more interesting. Ty Gibbs, uh, as long as 25. I like uh, that number. Watermelon Man, down as long as 28. Um, Byron, 28. Oh Jesus. I had <laughs> had him at 10 to 1. That, that, that didn't work out. Um, okay, so of the guys, as we kind of extend the, yeah. the range... Um, now that we're getting better numbers, are you interested in 
adding potentially adding any of these guys if the, if not uh if you had to bet one of the guys in this range who would it be Dude, this is so hard. Like, I, I want to go Busher, especially if you can get 20 to 1. I Honestly, I feel like just with the way that he unloaded, I think he's the best setup to potentially win the race because I love the value with Kyle Busch that that offers. However, yeah. during practice, all he was doing on his uh, radio scanner was cursing up a storm because the car was absolute crap like no yeah. nothing was working for him he just kept bitching it got to a point where he went out to run a lap and he came to the start finish line it was so bad he pulled directly into the pits like it's that was very hard of, of of them to uh go from winning the race to not being able to right? keep it on track yeah so um, like i don't i don't know i honestly i don't think they're going to be able to make any adjustments that put him at the top tier now ty gibbs that's an interesting uh, spot, but again, obviously, it's going to be a little more aggressive, and the talent gap, like I was saying, is a lot. It's a lot more more narrow. But there's plenty of speed in that car. He looked great today. Yeah, I guess he apparently comes from like a dirt background as a kid. So I mean, twenty five to one. I I don't mind a small small wager on that. The track house guys are jumping out to me. Suarez at twenty two. Ross has just been. Yeah, I can't with Chastain until I see him. Suarez is compelling, though. Look, he was plenty fast, got it in the top 10. 22 to 1, I think, is a good number considering what we saw and what he did. But the it's rough. Way, yeah, the, the only way I can see like Ross winning this race is if something like what happened in the Xfinity race happens where they make the call to stay out or something with like 10 to go, and he yeah. backs the bus up and just holds everybody behind him. Yep. Um, it's just interesting to see that how much the numbers have flip flopped. And yeah. obviously we talked about it. We don't expect all, you know, a variety of options to win. I really think the, the actual people who can win this race are Larson, Reddick, Elliot, Dinger, Truex, Christopher Bell. Just completely, completely scanning over Denny, huh? I don't think Denny can win. And I don't think McDowell can win. I think they are top three options and make a lot of sense, but at the, even at now at those prices. Yeah. Um, and then I think Suarez is honestly, <laughs> Suarez is probably the end. Maybe Kyle Busch. Like, it's really like Chastain I, and Byron are compelling. Obviously, Bowman, we think, can be decent. But So I think, okay, so like a guy like Busher, although I didn't think coming into the week he was going to be a legit contender to win the race, but I do think. Practice and qualifying definitely showed that he's got a little bit more, you know, uh, at, behind the wheel than what I had anticipated. And he's going to need a win in one of these road courses or the super speedways, just like Almendinger, to get into the playoffs. And, I mean, so he's going to be pushing hard and making some aggressive calls late, you know, if we get a caution and maybe not taking any tires as opposed to some people taking tires and blah, blah, blah. Like, I think he's somebody who could – play his way into a spot at the end to fight for a win, as opposed to a guy like Kyle Busch. He's got three wins already. His spot in the playoffs is pretty secure and at a pretty high level in the standing. So he's not going to be w needing to do anything like that. You know who else needs to get a win? The watermelon man. <laughs> you know what the watermelon man did in practice? He was sixth in five lap average and he was second in 10 lap average right behind second second of the like 10 guys that ran 10 laps uh-huh <laughs> I, I don't know man i, just I hate myself for it. doing this but he's going on the card i just i can't see 28 to 1 and say no thank you I, yeah I, I see you there believe me I, I will be extremely happy to smash a watermelon however i would much rather party with marty so yeah yeah, but it is nice to have the long number on Marty and now add the long number on Chastain and then maybe get one of them into victory lane. Uh, okay, let's look at the top 10 market because that's, I think, a really good market to attack this week. Obviously, a lot of these numbers have flip-flopped. Um, yeah. Are these? Yeah, this is probably correct, huh? Yeah, the Caesars numbers. Oh, I have Byron, it plus money or even money. 
I wouldn't uh, touch that, honestly. Austin Cindric at plus 120. Oh, wait a second. Are they not correct? They don't even have them posted. Okay, let's see. Does Barstool have them? We are... it Because of how late it was, <laughs> it's kind of screwing with our... These sports books are so annoying. Uh, let's see... Barcelona only has top threes. It is interesting to note, though, that of Barcelona's top threes, Martin Truex Jr. is plus 325. We grabbed that at 10 to 1 from Caesars early in the week. That's crazy. <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah, like, again, um, I mean, honestly, I'm not going to say, like, I knew that was going to happen or anything, but we definitely... We played the odds that if he came, if he fired off well, these numbers were going to plummet, and they did. Um, well, crap. Suarez and Cindric both finished top five at fourteen to one. Feels like a bad bet at this point. That is, that's like just donating money. Yeah. Bowman Ooh, and like Busher to both finish top ten at plus two forty. That's actually not bad because. Especially- Given what we oh, know they now. don't have their odds up, but I would assume with Bowman qualifying 14th and being okay in practice, he's probably still even. And then Busher putting it seventh, he's got to be close to even as well. So you're getting two eight. What was that? Two eighty five. That's really not that bad. Uh, two forty five, I think. Oh, two forty. Two forty. It's okay. I mean, I think if you did the math, it's probably under a little bit, but. Um, at a lot of places where you don't get that option. I think both those guys have very legitimate top 10 days in their range of outcomes. Um, and I think that that bet makes sense. It really is shitty that they didn't give us um, that. We yeah, still I will say if you go to the top Chevrolet market. So this was something I, I bet on the side. I didn't, I didn't add it to our sheet, but yesterday I was looking at the numbers and Larson was three to one to finish as the top Chevy. Yeah, it's crazy. And that's as opposed to, say, betting him in the top three market or even the top five that I took early in the week, um, which was less than even money. Wow. At this point, you're just hoping he finishes as the best bow tie. And with what we saw in practice and qualifying, like Chevrolets are a little bit behind everyone else this week, at least the Toyotas and then Front yeah, I'd say the only other RFK. one that's really compelling is the Dinger at four to one. Yeah, but uh, what's I'm it? excited to see what Chase Elliott brings to the table, though, because I will say he he looked he looked pretty good. Would you rather bet Dinger to top three at three to one or to top mm-hmm. Chevy at four to one? Because oh, give me the top Chevy number. Because Larson could win, Dinger could get two, and you could cash that top three. However, if the thing is, the Toyotas are the best. Yeah, it's true. This weekend. So if you bet top three, he could finish fifth, in theory, and still be the top Chevy. Yeah, that's true. Because there's definitely a a scenario where it's Truex, Redick, um, Denny, and then like McDowell or Busher or somebody of, of that nature that finishes ahead of him. Yeah. Blaney is now plus 950. It's going to be hard for him to beat McDowell and Busher. Everyone else kind of sucks, but McDowell and Busher look good. But yeah, at the end Especially of the day, with Blaney having a win. Yeah, that's true. Ooh, great uh, position of race winner. It's a 1 through 9, minus 220. Uh, that's so shitty. <laughs> um, yeah, so Brian and I will cover as much as we can. Obviously, we're still waiting stuff. It's uh, 8.30 West Coast time. We figured we'd have plenty of numbers to choose from. Uh, we will tweet stuff out. We will share stuff on, on Twitter, at EditoriousKRO, at Brian Definitely. underscore Twining. Uh, if you find stuff Sunday morning, we'll try and loop back a couple times before the race and chat about uh, any odds you find, so feel free to drop questions, and we will uh, make a point of coming back to to catch up with you. Uh, Let's hit up the, the the matchups real quick. We gotta. Is, is there good matchups? Yeah. So there so there are matchups posted. Donde. Future bets. Oh. 
No, not on not on Caesars, but they have them on uh, DK and uh, Barstool slash Bet Rivers has them. Okay, so Chastain plus one forty five versus Chase Elliott. Not touching that. Kyle Larson plus a hundred versus Tyler Reddick. That's compelling. Uh, Byron and Kyle Busch are the same. Cindric yep. plus one fifty. <laughs> Chris uh, Bell. I got that at minus 105 early in the week, so yeah. that's high in my face. Yeah, well, let's see head to head. Harvick plus 160 versus Truex. That feels fairly priced. Ooh, I got Truex uh, at plus 105. That's nice. Um, let's see here. Uh, Suarez plus 106 versus McDowell is kind of nice. That is nice. Um, what did I bet? Because do they have they have stage props? No. Um, and then they have cut William Byron at plus a hundred over Kyle Busch. I really tempted to try and get some of my money back that way. <laughs> uh, I am gonna add the bottom one on on there. Brian Blaney even money to finish ahead of Joey Logano. I mean, death taxes and Blaney over Logano is it's hilarious that one of your favorite drivers and one of and your least favorite driver are both on the same team. <laughs> right. Uh I think it really shows you, though, that like, I, our allegiances are definitely more tied to betting than they oh, are yeah. anything. 100%. I mean, we have a handful of guys that we root for regardless, but yeah. Any driver to win stage one and stage two and win the race six to one. It feels very aggressive. That should be much larger. Yeah. Because I almost feel like the person who's – this is going to be a race where the race winner is somebody who is one of the best cars on track, not somebody that needs to race for stage points. Yeah. Toyota still being plus 185 is kind of – That's interesting. interesting. Yeah, I'm surprised that they don't have more – like a larger market. I mean, it's been – Shit, four hours, four and a half hours since they qualified. Yeah, probably even longer. Yeah, whatever. Sports books don't care about us. Yeah, um, there is a few. So there is a few matchups over at FanDuel. So we got. Okay. Uh, let's see if we got any good ones here. Uh, you got Tyler Reddick versus Larson. It's one thirty minus one hundred two. Byron versus Bush, minus 112 both ways. That's crappy. Um, where Chastain Elliott, Chastain's plus 144. Dinger versus Cindric, Cindric's plus 148. Uh, where is NASCAR? Am I, I feel like I'm being an old dog. Here we go. Oh, yeah, right there. It's like under auto or oh, motorsport. Is it under auto or is it under motorsport? I think it's under there. motorsport. Yeah. Uh, props. It would also be nice, by the way, that sportsbooks could name this market the same across every single book so that way everyone knew where to look. You know, that would be nice, but sportsbooks really don't care, especially when it comes to NASCAR stuff. Apparently not. Um, I don't have much Kyle Larson exposure. I did add that top five as my best bet. Um, I'm really tempted to add... Larson as an underdog against Tyler Reddick. Isn't he... Uh, isn't he plus money somewhere? Yeah. That's DK, I think. Is it? Yeah, I'm opening it up right now. Larson plus 100, yep. Kyle Larson. Yeah. Uh, Larson... Over Reddick at plus 100. That's going on the card. 
Tyler Reddick may win the race, and that bet may have no life, but I just that for as good as he looked, I it's hard for me to fade it. And then I'm gonna go with his teammate, even because just because I like losing money, apparently. Uh, <laughs> William Byron over Kyle Busch. Oh my the, goodness! The best number was at Barstool. Um, yeah, plus a hundred. I gotta put something on the card. I can't just go like, oh well, my card's full, so. Chastain plus 144. That's, that is interesting. Plus 145. All right. I'm making one more addition to the outright card. Who is it? It's a half a unit more on Truex Jr. at 12 to 1. <laughs> And that's it for my outrights. I think that makes sense. Kyle Larson is four to one here. That's kind of interesting. Tricks at ten dinger. Suarez at twenty two is awfully compelling. Yeah. But it's like I don't know. At the end of the day, it's still Daniel Suarez. And I know exactly. he won one here last year, but that doesn't mean he's a winner every year. I'm gonna stick with uh I have I have my Byron at ten to one, which is probably dead. I have Truex thirty five, and I have Chastain at twenty eight. Yeah, I don't I like those. I like the Chastain ad. I mean I, I was thinking about doing that, but I'll let you ride with Watermelon Man alone. I appreciate that. When we ride together, things don't usually go very well. <laughs> yeah, thanks thanks for uh, tailing Truex, by the way. <laughs> I mean, for what it's worth, I was already on it before we... Like, like we said, we, we, we don't really talk before exactly. we our Wednesday show, and the fact that we get to some of the same names is, is pretty wild, but... Um, no. Yeah, I think I'm... I'm tapped right. out until I see some more more That's lines. Good. Yeah, we'll try and like I said, we'll try and loop back tomorrow and give you guys some more bets. Um, actually, let me go back to here and then I will pull up our card so you can see what we bet. Um, like Brian said, um, I thought I had it open. Apparently, I did not. Okay, so the card is pretty juicy. I'm pretty happy with it, I think. Uh, we'll see how it goes. So I have Chastain at 28. I have Truex. My card is a mess, by the way. 35. <laughs> Byron at 10. I have Chastain over Chase at plus 125. Uh, I have Kyle Larson over Tyler Reddick at plus 105. Uh, I have McDowell to top 10 at plus 120 from earlier in the week, which is nice. Bubba to top 10 at 325. Toyota to win at 3-1. to one. Blaney top four at seven and a half to one uh, it's only nine to one now i believe so it's not like you you lost that too much value on that yeah true x top 10 at plus 120 blaney top 10 at plus 130 alex bowman top 10 at plus 100 my bet my best bet from early in the week was larson to top five at minus 110 thank you caesars uh, i have true x to top three at 10 to one which is amazing um Larson over Reddick at plus a hundred and Byron over Bush at plus a hundred were my were my two ads along with Chastain and then I think uh these two <laughs> head to heads. My card is a mess. Brian, break down your card. It's in a much cleaner and more organized uh order. Yeah, so I only have two outrights right now. Maybe I'll add another one in the morning, but uh it's I got three quarters of a unit on Truex and a quarter unit on Blaney. I I don't know if I'm gonna get two too involved in that market. Uh, top tens, I got four of those. Alex Bowman plus one ten. Martin Truex Jr., Ryan Blaney, and the Bubba Wallace one. Uh, following Kyle on that, and then my 
only uh, or my one of two matchups I chose early in the week, Austin Sindrick over AJ Allmendinger, which is definitely not working out so well <laughs> right now. And then uh, the, the Larson top five was one of my favorite bets coming into the week. Just you knew the value was there before practice and qualifying. The Truex Jr. top three dart throw has definitely panned out. My best bet from earlier in the week, Martin Truex Jr. over Kevin Harvick. That's looking pretty tasty right now. And I kind of, uh, you know, could have, would have, should have more units on that. And then I just added Ryan Blaney over Joey Logano, which I'm going to make as my best bet as we sit here recording Saturday night. I love it. I love it. If we're not going to have a ton of options, go with the old tried and true and hopefully it works out. Um, I'm going to go Larson over Reddick as my, as my best bet as we sit here tonight. Ooh. Oh my uh, gosh, it, shots may, fired. May, maybe it's maybe it's going to look dumb, but I think Kyle Larson looks incredible. Uh, I know he didn't qualify as well as we wanted, and maybe I'll end up regretting going in on Larson like I am. But uh, just what I saw at practice and qualifying and how dominant he looked in Xfinity, I'm optimistic he can um, put it all together, figure it out, all that good stuff. Uh, good luck with your DraftKings lineups. Good luck with your bets. Um, if you have thoughts, always drop them in. If you find interesting stuff Sunday morning when you're watching yes. this, please leave us comments. We'll come try and come back a couple times. Uh, make sure you watch the uh, pre-race poll with Chris Wormy. I will link to that in the description. Um, great little Sunday morning talking about the race before the race. Uh, usually starts about a couple hours before the race. So. Um, I will link to that in the description. Make sure you sub to his channel if you have not done that. That is Brian Twining. I'm Kyle Robert. Enjoy the race, and uh, we'll talk to you next time.